Hello friends, and welcome back to Swift Lessons. For a special lead guitar tutorial, this time breaking down 20 blues rock guitar licks for beginner intermediate level players. Now, as we master each of these phrases one by one, we're also going to be learning to better navigate the fretboard using essential scales. Now today I'm playing through this 93 Gibson Les Paul, going into a Mesa Boogie California Tweed, but I'm also using what I consider to be the holy grail for any blues rock guitar player's pedal board, and that is the legendary TS9 Ibanez Tube Screamer. In honor of Steve Ray Vaughan's birthday, which is tomorrow, I'm going to be giving away one of these pedals, just text JOIN to the number that we have right here, okay? And you're going to be a part of a very small select group of people that are eligible to win this pedal. Alright, now let's get started learning some licks. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started learning these licks. Today, we're going to be working exclusively in the key of A, and some of the licks I'm going to be showing you are going to be suitable for just major keys. Those are the really major sounding ones that feature the major third, and then other licks are going to be suitable for both major and minor. Okay, getting started with lick number one. This one's being built from the minor blue scale, key of A. Okay, it's gonna look and sound like this. Lick number one. A one, two. Nothing flashy, but it's something that you can build upon and it's very beginner friendly. All right, so I'm sliding up to the seventh fret of the A string, probably from the fifth fret. And then I'm going to five on the D, back to seven, back to five, and then hammering up a full step to the root note of the A7 or A minor seven chord. This one is suitable for both major and minor. Lick number one. Okay, now moving on to lick number two. This will serve as a response to lick number one. Also coming from that minor pentatonic or minor blues scale. So again, sliding up to the seventh fret of the A string, and we're just going back and forth, five to seven, D string to A string. All right, then finally, we're gonna go to the minor third in the key of A fifth fret of the G string with a slight bend, and then resolving back on that A note, the seventh fret of the D string. Notice how I'm doing some slight bends here as I play through those notes. Very nice classic blues lick. Okay, now let's get real major with it for lick number three. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three. And real slow, a one, two, three. It's so important that you know which beat the lick starts on. So one, two, three. All right, here we're mixing in notes from the major uh, pentatonic scale. And combining them with the notes that we have with the minor blues scale. That's really the key to being able to achieve that professional major blues kind of sound. Okay, so a very Stevie Ray Vaughan-esque walk up. That was the seventh fret of the A string, fourth fret D, going up to seven on the D string. All right, then going into the next measure, we're gonna play. All right, that's some double stop action right there. I'm barring across the G string and B string fifth frets, and then hammering up the minor third that we have on the G string, going up to the major third on the G string. So, it's a classic blues trick right there. Then we're gonna bar with the ring finger, seven and seven. All right, back to that first hammer on before going to the root note. A, seventh fret of the D string. Okay, so that full lick. And in time, a one, two, three. Just for fun, you can try transposing it to the four chord, 10th fret position. Just use your thumb to find that root note. And you can play it for the five chord in the key of A as well by taking it up a whole step. 
you learn a new lick, it's always a good idea to try playing it in a few different keys. Okay, now jumping into lick number four. This is a very cool, very common way of starting a blues rock lick. Looks and sounds like this. First in time. A one, two, and... And real slow. All right, so I'm bending the G string. Seventh fret, up a full step. Then, downstroke and upstroke, I'm playing the fifth fret of the B string and fifth fret high E string. Next, to pull off, going from eight down to five on the B string, and then sliding up a full step to the 10th fret of the B string. Now we're in a position we call the upper extension of the minor blues scale. Right there's the root note. All right, so that's a great lick for getting from one position to the next. For a little extra flavor, you can also slide up to the uh, 13th fret of the B string. All right, very kind of Derek Trucks kind of style. Okay, now looking at lick number five, this one has a very specific usage. It's for moving between the one chord a7 to the four chord D7 because it's going to resolve on the D note, seventh fret of the G string. Looks and sounds like this first at full speed. A one and one more time, get it into your ear. And real slow, a one and Alright, so this one is very similar to the last lick. We're bending that 7th fret of the G string up. 5 and 5 again. Pull off 8 down to 5 on the B. Now here's where it's different. We're bending the 7th fret of the G string up a half step. Pulling off down to 5. Then the 7th fret of the D string. Before playing hammer hammer on the G string, 5 going up to 7, resolving over the D7 chord. And this will work for a minor blues as well. Okay, so you put that entire look together and we have. And at full speed, a one and. Okay, now on to lick number six. This one utilizes one of my favorite techniques. Stacking. Looks and sounds like this. A one. Really digging into those strings. A one. And real slow. One. Okay, so there I'm taking the fifth fret of the B string, then the fifth fret of the G string, bending that fifth fret G string up just slightly. Next, we're gonna play a triplet. Five down to seven with a pull off on the D string, then to the seventh fret of the A string. Next, just walk down, mixing together the minor blues scale and the major pentatonic scale. So that was five on the A, down to four, then to the root note, resolving, seventh fret of the D string. You put that look together and we have. And in time, a one. Okay, very well done. Now moving on to lick number seven. This is another one that has a very specific usage. In this case, for going from the five chord in the key of A, which is E dominant seven, down to the four chord, which is D seven. All right, the lick sounds like this. A one, two, three, four, and... And as you can see, we're resolving on that D note to match the D7 chord. One more time. And real slow. Alright, so we're matching the E7 chord, sliding up into that E note. Four up to five on the B string. 
twice. Next, we're going to play. All right, that was a pull off, going seven down to five on the G string, then seven on the D, back to five on the G, and then to the seventh fret of the D string. So far you have. All right, then as the D7 chord comes in, the four chord in the key of A, we're gonna play hammer, hammer. All right, and that's gonna sound great as the four chord comes in. Okay, now jumping into lick number eight. This one's going to begin in the upper extension of the minor blue scale key of A. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one and... And real slow. So we're sliding up to the ninth fret of the G string and then alternating back and forth between that note and the eighth fret B. You can use hybrid picking, pick and finger. All right, I like to vibrato as I go before sliding back. Nine down to seven and then pulling off down to five. Before going to the root note, A. You put those bits together and we have Then in the next measure, we're going to complete the lick by playing minor third to major third. All right, that's a hallmark of the blues rock genre. All right, fifth fret going up the sixth fret of the G string before resolving back down to the root note. All right, the full lick. And in context, a one. Just like that. Okay, now jumping into lick number nine. This one has a very cool rock feel. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three, four, and... So that began with the fifth fret of the G string. That's that minor third. All right, next we're going to pull off seven down to five on the D string before sliding seven down to five on the A string with the ring finger. So far you have. All right, next pull off down to three before going to the fifth fret low E string. You put that together, we have. Then we're going three on the A string, and then back to five on the low E string. All right, then the open E string, third fret bend in, and then open A string to finish the lick. Resolving to A or A7, right? Okay, you put that lick together, we have real slow. Next for lick number 10, we have another typical rock lick. This is going to be what we call a repetition lick. Looks and sounds like this. A one, two, three, four, and... One more time. And real slow. Okay, so we're on the eighth fret of the high E string, bending it up, then playing five on the high E, and then five on the B string. This is a very useful repetition. All right, you wanna practice going with your pick, down, up, down. All right, then we're gonna bend the eighth fret of the B string up a full step. Before matching that note with the fifth fret of the high E string. So. All right, for lick number 10. 
Okay, now on to lick number 11. This time we're gonna be making use of the major pentatonic scale, or you could also say the major blues scale in its G-shaped position key of A. Okay, so the major pentatonic scale would look and sound like this in this position. But if you use the same exact fingering that we had for the blues scale, but starting from the pinky, we can have the major blue scale. All right, the lick is gonna sound like this. A one and... And real slow. Okay, so we're hammering. Second fret of the D string up to four. Then the second fret of the G string. Next, we're gonna slide four up to five on the G string, but I like to add a little bit more depth to this little motion by grabbing my high E string open. All right, then we're back to two on the G string. Four. Four on the D. Stacking, right? Before going to the second fret of the G string and resolving over A. All right, the full lick. A one and and real slow. Okay, now jump into lick number twelve. This is also going to be used in that position of the major blues scale. It's gonna look and sound like this. One, two, three, four. And real slow. Okay, so we're hitting the A string open. Then with the A major chord barred, we're going to strum maybe the D string, G string, and B string together, second fret. Then walk chromatically. Three, four, five on the B string. Okay, next, we're gonna slide into the A major chord and play two on the B, G, D. So far you have. All right, next, we're on to the A string, fifth fret. And then a little roll, third fret, up to the fourth fret with the hammer. And then right here, second fret of the G string. You put that together and we have real slow. Okay, one, two, three, four, and one. Just like that. Okay, now for lick number 13, let's move up the fretboard just a little bit. Here we're gonna be combining two positions, that upper extension of the minor blue scale, and a very similar shape in BB's box. Up a full step, we have 11 on the G string, 10 on the B, 12, 13, the uh, 10th fret of the high E, and 12. Everything you need to make some very cool BB King style major guitar solos. All right, this lick is gonna sound like this. A one, two, three. And real slow. Okay, so I slid up to the ninth fret of the G string. Then went to eight on the B. Back to nine. That's one measure of music right there. A one, two, three. All right, then we're going up into the BB's box and playing 10, 10. 11 on the G. And then grabbing the minor third in this key. That's the 13th fret of the B string, bending it up nice and slow. And then resolving to the root note, which is right here on the 10th fret of the B string. Now make sure when you're bending that note, you just add a little bit of tension by doing it nice and slow and letting that dissonance kind of rub against the progression. All right, you put that lick together and we have. And at 
full speed, maybe in context. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, now on to lick number 14. Let's keep on climbing here. Now we're gonna utilize the minor blues scale, key of A, in its A-shaped position. So picture an A minor bar chord shape, or an A7 shape. Surrounding those chords we have. And keep in mind I'm gonna have tabs for all of these scales on a PDF study guide at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Okay, so that's the scale. From that scale, we can create this lick. Real slow. And this one comes in right on beat number one. So one, two, three, four, and one. All right, double stop action. 12th fret high E string and the 13th fret of the B string. Bend in the B string up slightly. All right, then we're gonna play a pull off, 14 down to 12 and then 14 on the D string, a triplet. Back to 12 on the G with a slight bend before going back to 14. Then we're gonna end the lick with 12 and then 12 hammering up to 14. Real slow, the full lick. Okay, so thus far we've learned how to play some licks in the main position of the minor blue scale. And we also learned how to add some major flavor. We've looked at the upper extension of the minor blue scale. And how to tie it together with the BB's box. We've looked at the uh, major blue scale in its G-shaped position. And we also learned how to climb all the way up here to the A shape of the minor blues scale. Now let's go down to the open position of the minor blues scale. And take a page out of Steve Ray Vaughan's playbook. One, two, three, four, and... More time and real slow. Okay, this lick, let's break it up into two parts part one and part two. All right, part one, we're hammering zero to three on the A string, then the open D. Hammer one to two, and then the open G. That's part one. Now part two, we're gonna play zero, one, zero on the D string. That's gonna be a hammer pull. All right, then to the third fret A, open D. And then real simple, bend the third fret A string, open A. And then resolve second fret of the G string in A note. All right, you put that full lick together and we have real slow. And at full speed in context, so one, two, three, four, and... Okay, now jumping into lick number 16. This is another one that has a very specific usage. It's for taking you from the five chord down to the four chord and then back to the one chord. So in the key of A, that'd be E7, or one, two, three, four, D7, two, three, four, and A or A7. Okay, and over those changes, we can play something like this. A one, two, three, four, and... And real slow. Okay, so once again, I'm picturing the minor blues scale and the major pentatonic scale only transposed over the five chord, 
and the four chord. All right, so taking a look at the five chord, E7, I'm targeting that chord's major third, the 13th fret of the G string, sliding up in. Then I'm gonna play 12 on the B, 12 on the high E, then walk chromatically. And throw in a bluesy bend. So that was a 14th fret of the high E, walking down to 12. Bend in the 15th fret of the B string up. And then go into 12 on the high E. The root note of the E7 chord. All right, I'm gonna take that down a full step and then change it up just a little bit. And then by the time the one chord, A or A7 comes back around, I'm picturing that BB's box position. Which overlaps with the four chord. Okay, so same thing, I slid up in. Now I'm on the 11th fret of the G string. 10, 10. All right, then walking chromatically, 12 down to 10. Now here's where it's different. We're going to bend the B string 13th fret twice before giving it this very cool BB King style ending. All right, that was the 10th fret of the B string, 11 on the G, and then back to 10. All right, you put those two parts together and we have. for lick number 16. Okay, now moving on to lick 17. This one really explores the fretboard. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three, four, and... and real slow. Okay, so I slid up to the seventh fret of the A string, then five on the D string. Next, we're going up a full step and playing. I slip to the ninth fret of the A string, seven on the D, and then back. So far you have. Keep that pick alternating. All right, next we're going to play. That was the 10th fret of the D string with a slight bend. And then 12 on the A string before sliding back. 10 down to nine on the D. And then resolving on A, 12th fret of the A string. You put that together and we've got. All right, make sure you can count it. A one and two and a three and four and one. Okay, now moving on to lick number 18. Once again, we're eyeing up that minor blues scale, A-shaped position. All right, the lick is gonna sound like this. First at full speed, a one, two, three, four, and. And real slow. Okay, so I'm sliding up to the 17th fret of the B string. Then 15 on the high A. Then we're gonna alternate. 15, 14, 15. Notice how I've switched to hybrid picking here. Pick and finger. Next, double stop time. All right, I love that double stop. 12th fret of the high E string and 13th fret of the B string. Bending the B string up slightly. Before playing. All right, 14 on the G, pulling off down to 12, and then hammering back up, and sustaining that note with some vibrato. You put that together and we've got a one, two, three, four, and... Okay, now moving on to lick number 19. This one, again, has a very specific usage. It's for taking you from the one chord to the four chord. Looks and sounds like this. A one, two, three, four, and... And real slow. Dropping me off in a very interesting place, right inside. The four chord played as a C shape. Okay, so let's break this up into two parts. Part one. And 
part two. All right, so bending the fifth fret G string, pulling off seven down to five, then we're sliding seven down to five and pulling off to three. So far you have. And then go to the fifth fret, low E string to get that first part down. Next we're gonna play. All right, that was three going up to five. Two on the D. And then slide in. Three going up to four. Four resolving on the D note. Third fret of the B string over that four chord. All right, you put those two parts together and we've got real slow. And at full speed. Very cool, very stylish way of moving from the one chord to the four chord. Okay, excellent work today, everybody. Now moving on to lick 20. This is the final lick for today. It's gonna look and sound like this. One more time. And real slow. Okay, so I'm picturing that upper extension. But you should keep in mind that whenever you see these extensions, they are just a small part of a larger position of the scale. the lick one more time, a one, two, three, four, and Okay, so it starts off barring eighth fret of the G string and B string as we hammer up a half step to the ninth fret of the G. Next, lean into a slide real hard, eight going down to seven on the G, then 10 on the D, back to seven, and then back to 10. That's a good place to stop and practice. Next, we're gonna play. All right, that was the seventh fret of the D string. 10 on the A, back to seven. All right, then a little slap of the strings. And then a slide away, uh, grabbing some notes that you would find inside the A7 chord, the flat seven and the major third. That's going to be the, the 10th fret of the A string and the 11th fret of the D string. All right, pluck those two notes together and then slide away. You put all that together and we have real slow. And at full speed. Just like that for lick number 20. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this licks lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swift lessons. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.